Good evening, everybody. It's been, as the youngsters say these days, a hot minute since I've been here. Um, I can't even give you a good reason. It's to, Well, I can. It's been really an exceptional summer here where I live. And I've had visitors and, uh, you know, just visitors and trips, visiting others and baseball games, go Elks. Um, and just, it's just been a nutty summer. And it's great because I haven't had a summer like this since I was like 10. So Yahoo for that. Um, it's been, it's been great. I think I'm also having a little wine. So if I get over expressive, then blame that. Um, but yeah, it's just been great. And I think, it's sorry, my hair is just wackadoo, so whatever. Um, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's been a while since my dad passed. And I mean, what, I'm like, you just I'm like, why am I cricket? Yeah, is that better? <laughs> uh, but I think this is the first summer that I, f for whatever, started to kind of enjoy my life for me. And it's a really weird thing to say, and I don't, I'm not trying to disparage my life previous to this because, oh my God, I've had a blast. But it's just, it's just, it's, it's just been an, an exceptional summer and I'm so thankful for it. So, um, anyway, so, so, and I will tell you, doing YouTube is, is hard. It, anybody who doesn't know, so there's a lot of, Lisa Pepez just did a thing where she, she, she did, recorded something like three times and it was a long recording, you know, technical difficulties all the way along. And finally she said, screw it. I'm having drinks and I'm going to do this hot take or whatever it was. And, and, and she had a blast and her view, I, I personally did as a viewer, had a blast listening to her. And it was not because of the alcohol. It was just because she'd done it three times. First of all, she had a lot of practice. So she, so she, I'm sure I'm guessing here because she didn't say this, but I'm guessing on the few times that I've re-recorded stuff, you could have skipped over stuff that you're like, God, I wish I edited that out or, you know, so, so you make a point not to go there when you're doing a second, second version or third version or fourth version in her case. But I think it was four, I think it was four takes for a hot takes. So, I mean, each one was like, I, I don't even know, but it was like 50 minutes. I may be totally wrong. But anyways, it was a great recording. What am I trying to say about that? Um, oh, just that YouTube, I mean, I can't imagine the energy expelled from her for four of those videos. Because I do one and I'm like spent. And um, not in a bad way, because I like talking and then, the, you know, there's no one, I mean, literally I'm talking away to a computer. There's no one in front of me, but I know they're out there. You are out there. And there's a little bit of pressure to be kind and be real and be good. Um, and not use too many swear words, which I'm really bad at. And, you know, just all of that stuff. So, anyways. Um, so, I don't know where I was going with that trade of that. Because that's what happens when you drink wine and you're, you know, old. Cheers. Um, anyways, so there's... Oh, so YouTube. So, I've been off for a while. Because I... It... it ugh. It takes energy to be yourself, which is such a weird epiphany for me. I don't think I really got it, you know, that it, so it's, it's hard to be yourself. Just, you know, this is me. So imagine what it's like when you're elsewhere in front of other people or in front of uh, people who are paying you money, you know, like I was an event planner, so that's what I did. I sold our services and, you know, wanted people to like me because if they liked me and trusted me, then they would, then they would buy my services. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, psychological energy, I guess, being put forth in those transactions. And 
and I think in a way I started to feel that about YouTube. It's like, you know, who are you? I mean, I always feel like I present myself real. Uh, part of it is because, um, you know, it's kind of, I'm kind of a one take, one shot deal. Occasionally, if I really screw up, I'll piece a couple of things together. But it's not like I'm leaving anything out and certainly not editing anything out. So what you see is what you get, and I feel good about that. But um, there are times when I get done where I'm like, oh, my God, that's a, that was exhausting. And I'm like thinking, why? You were just being you. Well, it's, you know, when you're expelling that kind of energy to others, it is expelling energy. You know, you are using resources within your physical frame and mental frame to express yourself well and clearly. And that takes freaking energy. And, uh, and it can wear you out, especially for, and for me, because I, I, I have, it turns out I'm a storyteller. I don't think I knew that when I started YouTube, but it turns out that that's what I do. And, and recollecting stories to people who weren't there. It's one thing when you're at a family dinner and you're going, oh, we're going to hear this again. Yes, you are, because it's a great story. And you go on with your story, but you're getting a lot of feedback or, or additional, you know, wait a minute, that's not exactly what happened. That's not, I didn't say that. You know, you get all that interaction. But when you're just telling the story to you from me, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of recollection and a lot of energy coming out of my mouth. So, uh, it's, it's hard. And I think that I got, I got, to, I love you. I love this process, but I got really burnt and I don't, I burnt out and I don't mean burnt out. It's not like I profusely producing videos. It's not that it's just that each video requires an extensive amount of mental ugh, fortitude to, to put it out there. Um, especially if you're talking about something that a whole lot of people know a lot more than you do about. And I've felt that pressure as well. I have never felt that pressure from anyone. And I thank all of you and the entire YouTube community for not coming after me, for not knowing more or not being better at what, at, at what I interpret cards and tarot and any of that. I thank you all very much for that. But on the other hand, there's a fair amount of pressure um, that you want to be clear and want to be real and want to express yourself well. Um, and not, you know, piss anybody off. And that's the, the, you know, that's that, that's that cloud. You can't see it. It's off screen. It's right above me. It says, don't piss anybody off. It's that big cloud. But the other thing is, is I'm going to piss people off because I'm an opinionated person and I, I just am. And I'm going to say stuff that's going to piss people off. And you know what? Don't we all? So anyways, anyways, the reason I'm back is I just saw a, and I'm going to tag him. Toadstool Tarot uh, did a VR to a, um, and I don't even have it written down here. Shit, I typed the whole thing. Damn it. Printed out all the questions, but I left the hashtag out. But it's something like your Tarot to Magical Journey or something to that effect. I'll, I'll hashtag it in the thing. But I thought it was a fascinating thing because it involves YouTube and kind of the, you know, uh, it, the, the meandering questions of which there are many, I might add, 25 um, 25 questions, and I may or may not, may not answer them all, depending on our time frame here. Where am I at already? Um, but I just thought it was really fascinating and interesting. And as I'm listening, listening to Robin answer his questions, I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I, I felt that too. Or, or what are you talking about? You know, I mean, just, I mean, every, all, you know, all questions are perfect questions and all answers are all over the board and so it was so interesting to listen to him I just I just I really liked it and it intrigued me and it powered me back to get back on on here of course I don't, again I've ha I had a whine or two um and uh, maybe that motivated me as well I don't know um but so if I get wackadoo I I'm not going to drink a lot while I'm here but um let's hope it stays that way I don't know Anyways, um, and, and I need to take a sidetrack here and say, I met up with a the, uh, the sister of my sister-in-law and her partner tonight for uh, um, drinks and, and a meal. Um, they were visiting up from um, Santa Cruz. It was, it was it, and I hadn't seen her probably since we were trying to figure out when was the last time we saw each other and we decided it was probably at my brother and her sister's wedding, which was like 1987. So I'm just not, 
I, I, I don't run with that family. Um, I love them all. I, I've met them all, and I love them all. I've, I've seen, uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Two of her sisters, a lot. Um, a brother, a lot. I think there's five. Is there one that I don't see at all? I, can't, I don't know. But anyways, it was really fun to see them. And the reason I'm bringing that up is... Oh, so we go out to dinner, and oh, not out to dinner. We went to a little a group over here, and one of the things I one of the thing one of the things I ordered was their um, something something cauliflower, which was the best cauliflower sriracha cauliflower I've had in forever. Not just sriracha, just cauliflower done. However, God, it was good. It was so good, but it was like the whole head of cauliflower it was huge. So I. And everybody part, partook of it, but I ended up coming home with about a quarter of it and put it in my fridge. And I have a rant about cauliflower because, come on, uncooked, it doesn't smell like anything. Kind of, It's kind of in the same category as broccoli. No big deal. And then you throw it in some heat and it stinks. And the thing about, and this is why I didn't like vegetables as a youngster, I mean, ugh, cauliflower, Zucchini, of course, my mom was into boiling everything, but zucchini, it all stunk, you know, and spinach, she'd cook it up and turn it into slime. I'm like, no, I was not a big veggie fan early on. Then, you know, believe it or not, 10 years later, I turned full vegetarian. I am not that now, but I was for a long time, which, which my brother's like, I don't know how that happened. And I'm like, neither do I. I don't know how that happened. But anyways, so I take, bring the cauliflower home. And it smells up my car, and I'm like, dang, this stuff is fragrant. And it's just cauliflower. There's nothing else on it that's creating that cauliflower smell. It's just the cauliflower. I stick it in my fridge, and all night, every time I open up the fridge, it's this blast of, I don't know what it smells like. It's just, it's not, it's not a nice smell. And so I just want to say, stop it, cauliflower. Or, come on, veggie growers, get something in there that makes it not stink after it's cooked probably be horrible for us probably kill us but you know what I'm saying so does anybody else have that problem if you can relate comment down below uh, or any other vegetables that just irritate the sh nice out of you uh, anyways I need to turn a light on because like oh no I can read it okay can you see me I guess you can okay so the the VR I'm responding to is the tarot magical journey how or, or whatever and there's 25 questions and I just thought I'd start Start with number one. What is your channel name and the signif significance behind it? My channel name is Star and Flurry. I've used that handle. Is that what the youngsters call it? It's probably what the oldsters call it. Ham radio operators from days before they have a handle in it. And so my handle's been Star and Flurry for a very long time on everything. And I can honestly say I don't know how it started. It's just that I love, there's nothing better in my world um, than a clear dark night sky full of stars so I love that I mean the best line ever in a movie well not ever but one of the best lines ever in a movie was at the end of 2001 when he says it's full of stars <laughs> so I love that and then I love snow and I love um, I don't like the big snow dumps, but I love watching it fall. I love the flurries. And I think I've spent time on my obsession with that in earlier videos, so I won't go into it in depth. But the star and flurry kind of came from that, and I just stuck with it because it's uh, it's familiar to me and it's it's common. Now, I will tell you that I got a little crap for my brother about it because he says, what is it with this blank and blank? You know, all these hip, you know, hipsters were in this conversation like five years ago. Hipsters are like, you know, smoke and, you know, smoke and bark or, you know, all these different like double things. And somebody did a, we were sitting at the, I was visiting him in LA and, and he, and he just started cracking up at the dinner table and like, well, not dinner table, but afternoon we were probably having cocktails and he just started cracking up I go what and he goes there is seriously a new app online that's called um develop your hipster business name 
and then, and, and and you just you, it's like a you go in there and then you just press a button and it spins and then it pops out a, <laughs> pops out a name uh, your your new hipster name and and they were hysterical and so the one that really got me rolling and it was just random things t- t- tied together with an and in the middle so like m- like my my channel name is star and flurry um, but then you go into this app and it throws out these names and the one that got us just rolling was oatmeal and string. <laughs> so I swear to God, one day I'm going to start a channel. It's going to be called oatmeal and string and it's not going to have anything to do with anything. It is not going to have anything to do with oatmeal or string, but the name itself just killed me. And of course the logos are just popping in my head, um, about what you could, what you could put below or under the <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, it just it made me it made me crack up. So nonetheless, I've thought many days or not nonetheless, but I have thought many days about changing my star and flurry um, name because it might be considered cheesy or whatever. But you know what? I love it, and it's two things I love dearly, and and it was developed long before hipster name generator was developed. So I feel no feel no pain about hanging on to it. Shame, I should say, feel no shame, but hanging on to it. So that's my channel name, and that's and and the city of it says that I love stars and I love snow flurries. So, what type of content do you create for your channel? For example, vlogs, educational, do it yourself, live streams, and so on. Um, I basically I tell my stories. I have a bunch of them, and um, it was funny because when I started to kind of burn out on this YouTube, I think God, I was thinking, God, did I tell all my best stories? It's like, no, <laughs> I, I know this because I sit with my neighbors probably three times a week on their porch and there's always a story coming out of my mouth. Not one I've repeated here. So yeah, we all have, we have lives and we have good fun stories. And, uh, and so that's, that's, I think that's what I do. I tell stories and I wrap them around the things that tarot create in me or, or spark in me. And so, um, I would say what type of content you create. I think I create tarot content, tarot content that, that reminds me of the stories of my life. And interestingly enough, that really is to me a lot of what tarot is, is reminding you of the wisdom that you have, especially for an older person. I know if you're younger, um, I think what tarot can do is really expand your mind. And I think for a lot of older people, what it does is, is reach in and remind you of what's in your mind. And that's, what's so intriguing to me about, about this, um, about tarot. So there's that. Okay. So three, what inspired you to start your channel? I think it was just, I, I think I watched a lot of YouTube uh, what they call tarot tube. I think I watched a lot of tarot stuff and was just fascinated by it. And I'm not sure I thought I had anything to teach or show at that time, but I just thought it was an interesting medium and I wanted to try it. And I have spent most of my life in business and sales to, you know, to dial it down to what I did. I think what I did was a lot more than that, but in the end, that's what it was. Um, and yet there was always this creative thing going on in, in my head. I have several kind of moment, which I may share at some time, but kind of momentous things that I thought were um, super creative um, that even my mom, who is incredibly creative, um, looked at it and said, God, where did this come from? You, you know, because I spent most of my life being told I wasn't creative. <laughs> so, uh, so um, yeah. So I think I've always had it in me. It just never, I just didn't think I did. I've been told for a very long, I'm not criticizing my mom for that. She just didn't, this was just not something coming out of me. And uh, she didn't feel a need to nurture what wasn't coming out of me. And eventually when it did start to come out of me, she was, it was more shock. <laughs> like, where the hell is this coming from? And so for me to finally have the time to think and focus on something other than everything else, um, some of the creative juices started kind of popping out. And so I think, and watching YouTube and getting involved in tarot, I think that's kind of where all of this developed from. 
And that's where I, that's why it what inspired me to start my channel. And it took me a long time. I mean, I recorded videos for probably six months. Because I'm just, I'm such a stiff nut in front of a camera. I'm terrible. And um, I'm just terrible. I mean, I have a whole 50 years of family albums with me doing, you know, in... <laughs> I'm just, I'm, t I'm terrible at photographs. People put a camera in front of me and I, you know, immediately turn into that icky face. And I knew that it was, you know, is it going to be any better video? Probably not. So I just started recording videos just so that I would get comfortable in front of the camera. And I think there's a point at which you finally, you just do. And actually it's kind of started to reflect in just other photographs as well that finally I just don't, I don't, freak out when the lens comes out um yeah so so what's what was the question oh how long have you been a youtube content creator so i didn't even know when my first video was maybe i don't think it's been that long six seven months eight months i don't know i'd have to look back um but you know, add on six months prior to that of me just talking to the camera that would, you know, and saying things that were never going to be put onto YouTube. So that's how long it's been. What are your hobbies outside of your channel? Well, I, uh, what do I do? Well, I'm a guitar player and singer. Um, and I, I've mentioned that in previous videos. I do, um, I've been a little off of that for a while, uh, mostly because I lived in condos and apartments and you just can't rock out musically and comfortably when you don't, you know, especially when you're not sure you're that great. I mean, I knew I was okay. I spent a lot of time in college playing for, um, playing for my dinner as it were. But, uh, yeah, you just, you, you I'm so, I'm a little self-conscious even, you know, even though I've played for people often, uh, as I said, in college, you, you, when you're in a situation where you're playing, for people that, number one, that you don't know, who aren't necessarily there to hear you, that's a whole thing. And so I was very, I didn't do that when I was living for, you know, the 26 years I was in Seattle and the eight years prior to that in Portland, it just didn't happen. Now that I'm in my own home where I have all four walls belong to me, um, I've finally started to kind of come out of that self-imposed stoppage and I've really been enjoying it. So that's one of my biggest ones. Uh, what else do I do? Um, I do do, I do draw. I'm not very good, but I'm trying. Um, I read a lot because I love reading. I wrote, uh, I wrote, I spent nothing, I, I read nothing but nonfiction for like the most of my life. And that changed about, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. <laughs> When somebody suggested a book, said, I think you really like it. I'm like, oh, I don't I think it was historical. I think it was All the Light We Cannot See, I think. Uh, and the other one was The Goldfinch, two uh, recommendations from my brother. And I started those books and found out, oh, oh, I do like to read. And so, um, so I love doing that. What else? Oh, and I've suddenly I've taken up gardening. I don't know where that came from. I knew I had, I knew I, I had the gene. Well, I should have had the gene. I didn't think I did for the longest time. But somewhere along the way, it's kind of reared its, its head. And I'm having a blast. And um, so I'm spending a lot of time in my garden. Not I'm not growing food. I'm just, you know, plants and flowers and things like that. And I'm really enjoying tending to them. So that's been really fun. What else? Look at, look at going. So what else is there out there that, oh, candle making and fragrance blending, two things. You all know my love of fragrance, so I've done that, and, and I think I've mentioned previously that I tried blending. I'm not very good at it, and it's really frustrating because you just want your first thing to come out perfect, and it never does. But I had a lot, but um, candles are much more forgiving than actual essential oil blends that you're making, and so... Um, well, plus you're not, you're just not, um, you don't feel like you need to add a lot of stuff to candles. You're looking for kind of one thing. Uh, and then with, with, with more scent blending, you kind of, you want to mix it up and do some fun stuff. And that's, I, it's been fun. 
and I I haven't abandoned it, but I'm. It's not near as easy. I thought it's not easy. It's not easy, and it's not near as easy I, as I thought it would be. Now candles are a different story, um, and I've had a lot of fun with them. But so those are some of my hobbies. Number six. Is there a new style of content that you want to try? Not really. I think this is, right now, this is my wheelhouse. Um, and, you know, maybe if I can find something that doesn't burn me out as bad as this kind of stuff does, then I'll embrace it. But at this point, I don't know what that would be because I don't know what, I'm not, I'm not in, in this, at this point, at my level of tarot, I'm not an educator. Um, I'm not, I'm not someone who could teach you something about tarot outside of how I believe in the system and how I believe that the system works, which I don't express openly because I think there's a lot of tarot people out there that would have trouble with the way I look at that. Um, I'll, I'll do a video on it someday, but, and I've, I've made, you know, I've made passing comments about it. Um, but you know, I'll say this outright. I don't think it's magical. I think it's, um, actually based on a lot of logic. Um, and it helps us get a, get us out of our heads. And that in itself is what makes it magical. Because um, there's a lot of things out there that do not encourage us to get out of our heads. In fact, they encourage us to stay within it. Within the limits of what they say we should and, and, and all of that. And so I'm not going to get on a rant here. But that's what I think. Um, how do you plan out your content? Oh my God. I... I really don't. If something strikes me, now I've done one, I did, I like VRs because that gives me a, a timeline. I've done one response to, just kind of random response to, um, to a, uh, um, a video that somebody did um, that just cut me the wrong, a wrong way in many ways. And, and I really had to decipher why. Because I really, actually, I, I understood everything she was saying, and yet I was like, rrr, rrr. and so I did a VR to that, um, and I enjoyed that. But and I did plan that out. I did kind of make because I wanted to make sure I covered everything that I wanted to say. But when I'm sitting here right now, no, I don't have a list. I mean, this the list is my list of questions. Basically, I don't. Sorry. Um, I, yeah. So no, I don't really plan it out. Um, what are your tools of the trade? I use, I knew, th I knew this was coming up. I use QuickTime on my Mac. I don't, uh, I, I do minimal editing on that if I have to, if something goes wrong. Like, you know, there are many times when I've been recording and I find out all of a sudden I'm not recording and haven't been for the last 20 minutes. Nothing more frustrating than that. Toadstool Tarot made mention of that. God, it's annoying. But, um, so I, I'll, I'll splice pieces of stuff like that together, which I can do in QuickTime. But other than that, um, yeah, nothing special. I use a, um, I use a, uh, a thing like this over my microphone, which is a blue something. I'm trying to packing up so I can get up and look at it. It's a blue, what's it called? Hold on, I'm going to hang on. Maybe it's just called blue. So I got this microphone years ago. Because I was wanted to record. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> wanted to record. Can I turn this all down? Okay. I wanted to record um, some of my music. I wanted to see if I was actually in tune. <laughs> I mean, I know when my guitar is in tune, I'm just not sure if my voice is. And so uh, I felt recording would help me do that. So I bought this microphone. It's been really nice, but it's very old. But it works, you know. I love it. And that's what I use. Um... And then, like I said, my Mac. And then uh, I do, I finally did purchase an overhead because I really like it when people do overhead shots. Um, but I haven't even unpacked it from the box yet because that is just going to be a path. In my head right now, it's a pathway to more pressure to do more stuff. And I'm just not ready to do that. So there it sits. I know I'm going, I, I was very motivated when I bought it. And I'm still motivated to use it, but it's gonna just sit there until I'm ready for it. Um, and hopefully, because I'm just, I'm not a deck reviewer. It's not like um, anybody needs to see what I'm showing close up. And when I tip the camera down to show you a spread or something like that, I think those visuals are adequate. 
if I ever got to a point where I wanted to start doing actual really visual close-ups of cards and things like that, that's where I will probably deploy that. But honestly, as my tarot journey journeys onward, I'm not sure that will ever be part of what I do. Um, as a content creator, do you experience burnout? Yes. If so, what does that look like and how do you recover from it? It looks like me not recording. That's that's what burnout looks like. And I recover from it when I see a, a post like what Toadstool Tarot just did, which was a great, a great hashtag. And I like doing responses to those. Um, I get I get motivated when I have something to say. When what I don't want to do is sit on here and bore everybody with crap that they don't want to, you know, you know, you have heard a million times. And I find myself doing that more and more. I used to, I used to eat up every YouTube video I could find on tarot, and now I literally can get through about five minutes of someone. I'm just like, no, this is no, not I'm not interested in this. Um, I'm not interested in this take. I'm not interested in this deck. Have it, own it, don't like it, whatever the reason might be. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you recover by being inspired by somebody who inspires you. And I have many YouTube people that inspire me. Total Soul Tarot is one of them. Which video are you the most proud of and why? I think that one that I'm probably the most proud of right now is the VR I spoke about earlier. Well, it wasn't even a VR. It was a, just a, it was my response to, uh, somebody complaining not complaining. I don't want to say it that way. Just really, you know, really struggling with the price of decks and un understood the price of decks and um, and and their situation in terms of being able to afford them. And I made a VR response to that. And I had recorded one version and then realized that it was just really what I had written was seemed unfair and wrong and misspoken. And so I went back and redid the whole thing again and felt much better about that video. And I think that's one I'm, 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 that's the one that stands out of my mind that I'm the most proud of. I don't know if it's proud in terms of quality. I don't know, but I think proud in that I, I said what I wanted to say and I felt like I said it well. Now, with that being said, I go back and look at it and go, Oh God, I wish I'd reworded that as we all do. You know, it's like typing out that letter that you put it, you know, for, for you old people on here who, you know, used to type out a letter or whatever, or even, well, even an email, you know, where you're responding to somebody and you're a little, not pissed off, but a little, you're very opinionated about the subject and you rail it on and you, and you send out your email and then you, you know, come back a day later and go, shoot, I could have really worded that differently. I could have taken the tone out. Or did the, so we all go through that and I'm not going to change that. If I ever felt that something I put on here didn't represent me well and represented my emotions more, I would probably, my emotions, negative emotions more, I would probably just take the video down. There's just no reason to leave it up. But, um, but at this point I, I felt, I felt that was a good, I, I, I feel good about the response. So, you know, that's, there, there's that. What inspires you within the magical pagan YouTube, what? Oh, not what, who inspires you within the magical pagan YouTube community? There's a lot of people that inspire me. Oh my gosh. Um, I'm particularly enjoying the political banter that's going on with, um, and I, I got, I should have written their names down. This is what planning is not my fort. <laughs> um, but there's a couple of Australian producers. There's um, Positive Change, something or other. Lena, who I bought her deck, Lena something, I can't remember her name. Um, the uh, the the uh, Tarot's Apprentice Jenna and uh, House of Lenorman get together every Sunday for a pretty uh, left wing political banter, and I uh, sorry I just I totally enjoy them, and um, they give me they they just and what I do what I enjoy about them is I sit there and I do my own cards when the question comes up I do my cards and I see where where I, what I'm reading and I try to get my reading out before theirs so that uh, so that I'm not influenced by what they're seeing to see how closely I align with them. So I really, it's good practice. I, I feel like it's good practice for me. So I'm inspired by them. I'm completely inspired by uh, Simon at the Herman's Cave. Um, his, his voice is just zen. I've said this before. 
Um, but I just enjoy watching his take on things. Um, I love it. Dustin at Modern Metaphysique is another uh, huge inspiration for me. Danny Mystic. The whole Danny, Lisa, Dustin, tri you know, triage there. I love all of them um, for many different reasons. I don't, uh, you know, uh, there's things that I kind of go, Ugh, I wish they wouldn't do that. And then there's other things that I'm like, do that more. You know, it's just, um, so th to me, they give me uh, interesting takes on everything. Um, Becca Nightall, I love Truth and Story. I love. I mean, there's a, you, you, the major, the, in my mind, there's these play, I don't even call them major players, but they're the ones you're all familiar with. I enjoy them immensely. Um, so those, those are the, the people that get to me. And I'm so glad they do because they teach me so much in their, in their interpretations. Toad Soltero used to do a, um, or used to, he, not so much anymore, but he used to do, um, live reads with oh, Ramon. I can't, I don't, can't remember his channel thing. But I love those too because he, they would get together and they would interpret cards and their interpretations were frequently so different. And it was fascinating to me how, how they looked at these cards so differently. And yet in the end of talking, you know, kind of going, well, I did this, and oh, I think this, and then eventually they would blend together, and I'd be like, this is what it's all about, is finding that mutual connection between different interpretations of the cards. And I uh, have tried in my um, understanding of tarot, learning of tarot, to understand that aspect of it, that there are, obviously, there's just, there's cards have you know, kind of technically specific meanings, but that as you blend them and, uh, and, and pair them with situations or whatever, it's just, you know, myriad everything. So it's just fascinating to me. Um, are there any channels you would recommend? If there are, I will list them down below. Yes, not if. There are. Of course there are. Um, and I will list them down below. Do you believe there are misconceptions about being a magical pagan YouTuber? Of course. Anytime you put, do you believe there are misconceptions? Of course. I mean, I think there's people who think it's the devil. Um, I think there's people who think it's um, um, predicting, absolutely predicting the future. And in, uh, uh, no. Um, I think that's a misconception. There's a million of them out there. I, you just, you know, you gotta, I think what you have to do is find Find what works for you. As the, the, a lot of the tarot tuber people say, you know, take what resonates and leave the rest. And I'm like, yes. Okay. But, you know, you could be just chewing the fat with somebody and that's exactly what they're doing is <laughs> taking the bits that resonate and leaving the rest. So I think there's more to it than that. On the other hand, I do think that if there's an utter belief, um, or I guess what I'm saying, I, what am I trying to say? That if somebody, if, if a reader is telling you something that just is not connecting with you, you know, it's kind of like what's that line from the Frasier show? If that shoe don't fit that, it, that ain't your shoe. I mean, that, there's the deal. And, and that's the truth. And that's what the, you know, so... I think tarot, tarot readers are not all magical and all powerful. They're not Oz. They interpret so many interesting aspects of life and how that might relate to you and help you move out of your comfort zone for a moment to consider other things. And that to me is beautiful and I think that other things uh, God I'm having a hard time expressing this but I just think I think the misconceptions out there are based on the fact that um, th that there's a lot of people out there who think it's super magical and this and that and I just don't I just I just don't think it is I hope I'm not pissing anybody off but that's that's me I'm kind of coming from the more cerebral aspect of the layers of the tarot 
Um, but that doesn't mean I don't believe in guides and, and things like that because I do believe. I mean, I know that there are many times in my life where divine in intervention came in and saved me from myself or from others. Um, and, and, and you might look at it as being, well, it was just your wisdom finally, you know, kind of knocking you <laughs> with their, the wisdom hammer comes out inside your head and goes, bonk, bonk, bonk. And, and that might be right in many ways. But I also think that, um, I do, I just think that there are divine, I, I think there are divine beings around who, who just make sure that we're not totally screwed up. <laughs> so, I hope, not quite. Um, okay. What do you like and dislike about being on YouTube? Um, I don't, I, I don't, I absolutely don't have an opinion that I don't dislike hardly anything about being on YouTube. Um, and I, I just like, I like what I'm, when I record a video that I like, that I'm, that I like it. If I record one that I don't like, then I don't like it and I don't post it. Um, so, so far everything's been fine. And my commenter said, but thank you people who commented. Um, uh, and I have some consistent, um, commenters or did when I was posting more regularly, but, um, yeah, they, uh, they, they're the sweetest ever. And I just, I really like, um, inter, you know, kind of interfacing with them and, and having, you know, brief conversations. It's hard because you don't want to, you can't get into an in-depth conversation. It's kind of like a remote text in, in a way, but nonetheless, I, I really enjoy that. What are some of the challenges and struggles you face creating? We're on question 15. God, what time are we in? Oh, 41 minutes. Okay, I'm going to breeze through these last. What are some of the challenges and struggles you face creating on this platform and how do you overcome them? I think the biggest challenge for me is the, and I don't even want to call it burnout. It's just the, um, I just think there's an exceptional effort when you get in, in front of, I think for anybody, I'm not talking just about piano. I think when you get in front of a camera and present yourself in your stories, that takes a lot of freaking effort. And that is that, and it is. It, I mean, it's. I don't, I don't, it's not like it's hard work. I'm not trying to say that. A lot of people are working harder than me when I do a video. I understand that. But I think that I think that a lot of YouTube people anywhere are just trying to be themselves on camera, which just in itself is like, does that even? Can you even do that? You know, I, I, because I don't know. I mean, it just seems like a kind of a weird thing. So, where where am I at here? Where the chance? So that to me is a challenge and a struggle. Is tr is is being able to continually sit in front of a camera and kind of be yourself. I think that's that's the biggest thing. What is your opinion of monetization pay? walls and other exclusive content. I I have absolutely no opinion on that. If you want to make money, this this is your side hustle or your main job and you do it well and I watch many YouTubers who it is. I mean the most of the YouTubers who are making a fine living on YouTube started, you know, what, fifty when it first came out, you know, glommed onto the platform early on, got a lot of followers and people just got invested in their lives. Um and I came on to some of these people you know, three years ago, four years ago, and I'm invested in their life. So I, I whatever they're doing, they're doing it well. And if they're monetizing their their content to be able to live their life because they're not working a standard full time job, I have no issue with that. Ads, that's you know. I watch a great TV show and there's ads. I mean, I'm being entertained. I'm invested in that entertainment. I don't have a problem with paying for that in that way. You know, when I'm paying, when paying streaming, paying a streaming service $6.99 for all the content I could imagine, then I had to sit through a two minute ad at the beginning. I don't have trouble with that. And you know what? There's volume control and you can avert your eyes. You don't, I just think when people complain about ads, I'm like, then turn it fucking off. What the hey? You are in control of what you're doing in front of the screen. Why are you blaming them 
for trying to, you know, for providing all of this for you for nothing. So I I really don't have a problem. And then if you want more content, um, then then pay for it. And I don't have a problem with that either. And you can, there's, so I, I didn't do that for the longest time. Uh, but then there were certain content creators that I really wanted to know more about and wanted to kind of get into that inside circle. And so I now, I subscribe to, well, subscribe, is that the word? I don't know, to two. And it's, it's costing me less than a cup of coffee every month, which is fine. But I get to enjoy their content a little more fully, and I don't have a problem with that. If I'm helping support them and what they're doing, um, and I'm getting pleasure and information from that, then I think that's a fair trade. I don't have a problem with it at all. Uh, do you have boundaries on this platform? Why or why not? I try to keep my family... I talk a lot about my dad because he's no longer with us, and I feel... Um, and I try, I, I would never, if, if we had not had the relationship we had, I probably wouldn't be talking about him at all, but we had a wonderful relationship and I feel like I want to share that with people, um, because I, I loved him and he loved me and we had a great, um, we had a great relationship and a, and a great lifetime together. And I'm so thankful that I knew him and I don't have trouble sharing that, um, with, uh, with anybody watching this channel. But I do draw a line with the rest of my family. Not, not because we don't get along, don't get me wrong. Yeah, totally opposite. We hate each other. No, we love each other. But they're, they're not, they didn't sign up for this. Um, and so they don't need to be a part of it. And so I try, I may reference them on occasion in a story or whatever. Um, and I try to reference them by title rather than name. Um, and, um, they, you know, they're not, they're, they're like I said, they're, they didn't sign up for this. It's not their stories are not my stories to tell, unless they are my stories. In which case, I'll tell them all. But yeah, so those are my boundaries, and um, and my other bound, and I guess my boundaries are to never talk. I hope that um, I never talk down about anybody. Um. I mean, Dust, Dustin at Modern Metaphysica has a great tagline that he says at the end of every one of his um, streams, which is, you know, everybody is fighting a battle you know nothing about. And that's true. And so let's not add on. Come on. I mean, because frankly, you don't even know them. You have no... You have no right to add on to that kind of stuff. So that's how I feel about that. <sighs> okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I'm not moving through this as quickly as I wanted to. <sighs> do you have any current girls for a channel? I do not. What are some of the mistakes you've made and how do you fix them? I don't think I've made... So far, I haven't made any mistakes. I mean, I think that there... You know, there may be people watching something that go, Ooh, I can't believe she said that, but... They've been kind enough not to point it out. Maybe because they know I'm doing this live and so sometimes things slip. But I don't, I try, I think being a customer service for as long as I was, you learn to choose your words, except for the massive amounts of swear words I use. I mean, I did really well then, but now I don't. My filter is not as strong as it used to be. But I think when you spend a lot of time in customer service, you learn to uh, temper how you speak so yeah um so i try not to make those kind of mistakes what are some of the ways your channel has grown since your first video well when i started this i thought if i get 10 subscribers i'm gonna be really happy and then all of a sudden i have 240 maybe if they're still there which blew me away i was like what i mean i could talk to 20 people maybe maybe 30 the 240, oh my gosh, that blew me away. So there's that. Have you ever wanted to quit making videos? Why or why not? Yeah, well, not quit. Uh, clearly, I'm here <laughs> today after not making one for like four weeks. Um, but I think you just need to be mindful of how much energy it takes for me to, to produce the introvert that I am. Um, it is, it is, there's an effort at expressing myself for this period of time. 
on camera. It's just not, it's not, I mean, I, I, I know it feels easy while I'm doing it, but when I get done, I am spent. So, which is weird, I think, because I'm having a blast. I, you know, this is fun for me, but it does wear me out a lot. And I know when I did that kind of, it was almost like a blitz of whatever. It was like a daily thing that I did. <sighs> That, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that again. Or if I do, I'm going to have it planned out more carefully. So I walk into a video knowing what I'm going to do rather than free, free falling it. Because I think that's what, well, like this one, that's what kind of oh, really sucks the energy out of me is, is coming up with what I want to say on the fly. But on the other hand, that's what I like about my videos is, and I, I think that's what other people like about my videos is I'm not pre-planned, I'm not pre-scripted, and nothing. And most of the YouTubers I watch that I love are not either. They are speaking freely and clearly about what they're thinking about. So there's that. Okay, where are we going here? Okay, what do you wish you knew before starting YouTube channel journey? I'm glad I didn't know anything. I'm glad I walked into this as blind as I could be. I watched as much YouTube as well. Not I didn't do I didn't do a study on YouTube. I just got sucked into it as many others have, and uh, and just learned from watching. Now I'm not a vlogger. That's a whole different thing. That's like storytelling in a movie format, short form. Uh, I don't do that. I sit in front of a thing and talk. So, um, yeah. And and I knew that would always be. I tried vlogging one day and it lasted for like you know coffee. I was like, no, this, I will not. So why would you do that? And so that makes me admire vloggers that I watch even more. I'm like, oh my God, when you're showing me a take of you making coffee from diff, you know, eight different angles, I know what that takes because you end up with eight different cups of coffee. No, no. I make one cup of coffee in the morning. I'm not going to photograph it. I'm not going to make a movie out of it and I'm not going to add beautiful music behind me making that coffee. So, yeah, no, I don't do that. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> do you post on any other platforms? If so, what are they? I do post on um, Instagram because a lot of my tarot folk are there. Um, I also post on, I have a WordPress account, starandflurry.com. Check it out. It's just... Um, Oh, I guess that's kind of something I do on the side is I'm a photographer. Not great, but every once in a while I catch a good one and I post it on starandflurry.com. Um, and what else? And I, uh, God, I got sucked into Twitter. I am still working on um, correcting that addiction. But I'm now on Threads, which is a much calmer, normal place, and I, and I love that. When I want to turn into a 15-year-old angsty pissy jerk I go onto Twitter and I can freaking say whatever I want um which is just <laughs> the lowest form of me there is but sometimes you just gotta get it out um but the but then if I have something substantive to say I go on thread and if I have something even more substantive then I try to do it on YouTube so there's that um do you have any advice for those wishing to create a channel um my advice would be just do it I mean, do, I mean, if it makes you nervous, do a little practice. I mean, like, just because you make a video doesn't need you need, mean you need to post it. Just make it. Look at you. Make the video. Look at you. Say, what am I going to do to make this better? You know, I mean, I spent my first few videos going, Nancy, um, the hair needs help. Then there was a point where she stopped caring about that. Or, Nancy, you didn't get the cinnamon roll out of your room. <laughs> <laughs> corner of your mouth or Nancy cut your nails or make sure your nails are clean before you do this you know there's all these things and now literally here let me show this I'm literally can I get it off here I literally have a post-it I mean it's soft oh I'm not gonna get anything out okay it's not gonna come off but I literally have a post-it here that says check for hairs <laughs> which I didn't do this that so I hope I'm okay check for loose hairs nails mouth and fingers. I mean, <laughs> these are things that, um, 
that you have to do when you're doing a video like this. You have to pay attention to, you know, you can talk all you want about everything, but the, the bottom line is you are still, you're right here is the focus of the visual that you are, are doing. And so pay attention to those little things. Those little things make a difference. And I'm not part, there are a million videos, probably, well, I don't have a million videos, but there are several videos where they'll, they'd be like a gray hair hanging, it might even be one here, I hope there isn't, but, you know, gray hair hanging out that just is fluttering throughout the video. And honestly, when I look at those, I think to myself, please, God, let me be the only one that is seeing that. And I'm just so sure that I'm not. And that's just so annoying. So those are the things I wish I knew before I did YouTube, just to check, you know, check everything. You know, you might have something to say, but make sure that your visuals are on point. And then have something to say. I mean, and feel feel good about it. Feel, you know, feel okay about it. Feel strong about it. If it's political, do it. You know, if you are willing to back it up, not back it up with, I'm just saying, if you believe it, then say it. That's your right. That's what this whole format is about. Um... You know, and you could temper it as you will. I know I do because I'm not here for political reasons. I'm here for tarot reasons. But I know my political stuff will, you know, filter out on occasion and that happens. And I have to be comfortable enough with that that I can, you know, speak it out and not have a problem with that. So uh, I think you need to have, you know, be clear in your voice. Um and that, again, takes practice. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with practice. Like I said, just because you make a video doesn't need you need to, need to post it. So take your time. Learn how to do it. Feel comfortable in front of the camera. And, uh, and then speak your mind. Do whatever you do. That would be my advice. And the last question is, who are you tagging this video? Oh, God, I don't know. You'll see it when I post it. So good to see you all again. It's been a while. Thank you so much for being here. I just, I really appreciate it so much. Star and Flurry out.